Stamped it and signed, and someone escorted me to Child and Family Protection Unit. So very many people don't know that this department actually exists, mm -hmm. but Child and Family Protection Unit is where they deal with all the family disputes, uh, relationship issues, divorce, separation, custody, child abuse, defilement, all those cases can be taken mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for a counselor, if you're looking for help, child support, all those things, you can first go to police, make your statement, and then they can take it from there. Okay. Yes. They'll so that is one option where, because um, recently I was talking to another friend of mine who's also very passionate about mental health, mm. and she kept talking about the fact that people don't know where to get counseling services. Yes. Like, okay, but, but where do I go? Mm. Well, they, they, everyone imagines that it's so expensive mm. that they can't afford it. Mm. So this is an option that's available. Yes, it's an option because, you, because the, the most important thing is to know that the presenting issues are never the real issues. Okay. So a counselor actually helps you to figure out the actual issue from what presented. Okay. An example? For instance, mm. um, you, Crystal, mm. if you have a headache and a fever, mm -hmm. the presenting issue is probably malaria <laughs> or an infection. Mm. So you have options. You're basically working with objectives of probably this or that, options. Eh? Uh -huh. But when you go to hospital and you have a general uh, doctor look at you, then you have blood work done. Then you find the real issue. Then the actual <laughs> results shows that you're expecting child. <laughs> oh my! I was not. I was not going there in my head. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. That's, yes. a, that's a very good example. Yes. Mm -hmm. So in counseling, I find that most. Of <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> um, for instance, I could. Someone could present with. Um, I don't sleep. I can't sleep. Mm -hmm. I can't sleep. When I sleep, I wake up uh, sweaty, with a headache, um, and then my appetite is going. All these things could point to so many things. Mm -hmm. So you come and you tell us all these things. Those are the presenting issues. Mm -hmm. But the presenting issues have a causal relationship. What caused that? You not sleeping. Yes, yes. So we go back in time. When was the last time you slept well? When was the last time you enjoyed a meal? Mm. And then from there, we work backwards. Then from there, we'll be like, okay, what, have you had any life-changing moment, event? So from there, that's when you started the insomnia. And after that, mm. we figure out the actual issues because there's something they call a stress headache. Mm. So find out, okay, where is it coming from? Is it coming from this side, backwards? Mm -hmm. There okay. are different things that... But I imagine it's a lot easier to work with adults than children. Not easier, but I mean, like if you're asking these questions to get the answers, mm. sometimes adults are better at that. Because um, children, there are different ways of going about communication. That's it. I would imagine mm. that... I think it was harder for me mm. in the beginning. Okay. Why? I didn't have a lot of experience. I was just uh, finding my way. Okay. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So I was new. It's a virgin field. Uh, no one knows what to do. But I found that even with children, it's easy. Because with experience, you know that once a child can't settle, mm -hmm. there is something. And with children, most of the times, we don't even ask them these questions. Mm -hmm. We can, I could just, for instance, um, I've gone to people's homes, mm -hmm. uh, house call. When it's a child, I don't see them anywhere else but their home. Oh, okay. Do you want to know why? Because that's where they're comfortable? It's a safe space mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. So they'll open up faster and better in the safe space. So I don't have to ask them any questions. So let's say if it's an eight-year-old or nine-year-old, I'll find out what they like to do. Mm -hmm. They like to play, maybe football or something. I'll also turn up in my jeans and trainers mm -hmm. and we shall play. Because yeah, a lot of the communication is done through play. Mm -hmm. okay. So in this play, we shall have something we call role play. Mm -hmm. So role play, I may be like, 
I'll tell the, the child to act like their parent and I'm their child. Mm. So I'll see exactly what they think of their parent, how the parent communicates through their child's actions. Right. Yes. Okay. So yes, it may be harder, but with experience, you learn to observe. Mm -hmm. You learn to role play with these children. You don't have to ask direct questions. No. You'll get all the answers by just doing what they love. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, so you jump in. Go to CPS, you get your placement. Yes, get my placement. We were not allowed to see people. Okay, you would sit in a mm -hmm. conversation, listening, oh. probably record a statement, but not give advice or okay. recommendation or anything. We're not qualified, no. Yes, yes. I got bored. Okay. <laughs> All right. I got bored because I wanted to talk. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say no. But you're supposed I to actually be learning. Think, yes. <laughs> You learn as you do. <laughs> okay. I was soaking it all in and I wanted to, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know, uh, be relevant. I wanted to, like, just say something. Mm -hmm. If it didn't work, it's okay. But I wanted to just say something. Okay. <laughs> and? Anyway. So one of those days, because they couldn't let us, I just got the statements. I stayed back, got all the statements for that day, got sticky notes, read through the statements and put my recommendations on. Okay. Each statement. Uh -huh. So one of those days, one of the funders starts to read. He says, hmm, okay. They start to use these recommendations. Then the head, one of those days, she was called Katie. Mm -hmm. She says, who has been putting on our statements all this stuff? Okay. These sticky notes. Uh -huh. There are so many. Who has been putting? <laughs> mm -hmm. Everyone was silent. I was like, huh? I'm in trouble. I also, I was also silent. I was on mute, in fact. <laughs> so you know what they said, you know, we are going to punish you. We are not going to write for you that, you know, that you're done with your internship, the recommendation. You're not going to get that letter from us if you don't say. I had to come out and say the truth. I said, you know what, I'm so sorry, but it was me. Okay. I felt like I had to. Yes. And then she looked at me and said, um, so it's okay. Now that we know it's you, it's okay. So she called me the next day and said, from today we're giving you your own clients. Mm -hmm. I was like, what? Excitement. Mm -hmm. I was so excited. So I started to see clients, see people. Of course, at that age, it was challenging in such a way that people don't trust. Because they think experience mm -hmm. has to be age. Okay, yes. And you They equate experience young. to age. Mm -hmm. And they thought, ah, you're so young. Mm -hmm. So I got a lot of rejection. From, so they would give me these files and say, all oh, these people, please go through their files so that you know the case before they actually arrive. Okay. Then they would come and then they say, where is the person supposed to work on us? Mm -hmm. And I'm seated right there. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, it's, it's me. Mm -hmm. I said, hmm? it's who? You? No. no. Some of them would storm out. Some of them would go and talk to the a funder and say, you know, I want someone else. This girl will not manage my issues. You see. Mm -hmm. After some time, these funders started to say, you know, she's the one who is qualified for this stuff. The rest of us, we are just giving you from experience. Mm -hmm. People started to slowly trust. And after three months, I think I was one of those counselors that they really liked. And people started coming and saying, oh... I want to talk to the other girl, the young one, who she knows my issues. She's the one who knows my issues. So after three months, went back to school, was DPC called me back. Okay. Did you feel at that said, point like you were making a difference? You were really yes, helping? Yes. I felt like uh, there was impact. Mm. I was looking to make impact. Mm. I never want to be in a place and I'm not seen, I'm not heard. Mm -hmm. If I'm not seen, let me be heard. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, I like to talk. Mm -hmm. So I felt like as doing both, as being seen, as being heard, as creating impact. So when he called me back, I was like, okay, so are these guys going to pay me? Mm. He said, no, I'll get you clients that will pay you. You'll go to their offices and you will advise them. And mm. yes. So that's what happened. So that's how you started? So that's how I started. I got most of my experience from CPS, mm -hmm. then got done with the degree, excelled at it, and then um, shortly after that, there was a course 
I was a new course at Mkozi, Masters in um, Masters of Science in Monitoring and Evaluation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Again, there was someone who said, you know, right now that course is coming up. <laughs> I had so many jobs and <laughs> you know, A thing <laughs> now, do not tell me I was looking for where the money mm. is, of course. Of you course, see? yeah. So, yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> I jumped on that course. <laughs> yeah, of course, I went back home. Yeah, that was in Kozi. I went back to uni. Yeah, I did the course, okay, I got done with it. But before I got done with it, of course, I got another job. I worked in a bank, okay, yeah, yes, mm -hmm. I worked in a bank. <sighs> <laughs> when I think about my experience in the bank yes. and what I'm doing now, uh -huh. I really learned a lot, yes, okay. from the bank. The yeah. pressure, the expectations, the little pay, I learned lots <laughs> while there. I like the way you add the little pay. Little pay. Little, Long hours. Very little pay. Mm. Yes. But I think, I, I, I think if I didn't go through that, I would never have appreciated my journey. Mm. up until this point. How long did you work in a bank? Previously on Crystal One on One. You said one of the best things about these last few months is spending time with your kids. Yeah. Um, you have three. So I had uh, my twins and then... Um, Were you back in Uganda when you had your twins? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. I left the job and came back to get married okay. and start a family. Till this point. How long did you work in a bank? About four years. Oh, that's that's a chunk. Okay. Yeah, so after the bank, one day they were rotating. You know they have to rotate you in the bank. Mm -hmm. So they sent me to, I think it was Chambogo mm -hmm. branch. Okay. <laughs> I worked there one day. And you were like, no? And I resigned. <laughs> yes. Okay. But still, while in the bank, I kept going to CPS. All my lunches. So I had, you were still doing yes, counselling yes. the whole time? Yes, mm yes. -hmm. Lunch break. Mm -hmm. I would, well, there were very few times that I used to go to have lunch, seventh floor. Um, so I would go to people's offices during my lunch break. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah? Were they paying you? Yeah, they were paying me. Okay. So during my lunch break, I would go to people's offices and come back. Then be in the bank till about 8, 7, oh. then go mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so even my Saturdays after work at three, I would go to, ah, to, to you help, see, yeah, to help see people. Yeah, CPS. Yeah, so after that, I also went to Butavika at some point. I used to help out in Butavika every Sunday afternoon. Yeah, so I got most of my experience there. I did not stop just because I was in the bank. I did stop the counseling journey. But what, what, what happened on that one day? What was the... Thing that made you decide I just, to resign? I just, first of all, when you're at head office, it's different. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's different because they have, uh, yes, there are so many people who can do your work at head office. So there's no, there's not lots of pressure. Okay. okay. When it comes to branch, you're getting used to a new manager, there are expectations there. Mm -hmm. I couldn't manage. You just knew? I just knew I wouldn't survive. And I was not going to wait for the bank to terminate me. I said, uh, no, I'm not going to go away with a very bad recommendation. And I said, no, this is it. Okay. So I left. I just resigned. And the moment, the, when they transferred me today, mm -hmm. the next day I worked in the, that place. Mm -hmm. The third day, when the HR saw me, she knew. <laughs> <laughs> she knew. She said, by the way, I've been expecting you. Because I know. You, but I thought that you'd maybe ask for another place, either to be brought back here or... Mm. I said, no, it's okay. She said, no, let's have an exit interview. I said, no, 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 no. This is the time. It's okay. Did you know what you were going to do? I didn't point? know. I had no clue. I was scared. Mm. I was scared because everyone said, counseling, will you earn from it? How? Exactly. That's what... Yes. And I think you, we know better now. Yes. But, mm -hmm. You know better. COVID happened. <laughs> And people realize it's important. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, from um, when I left, um, of course I didn't have any job prospects. Mm -hmm. 
course, I tried the newspapers for a bit. Mm -hmm. I'd buy newspapers every Monday. Every Friday, I mm -hmm. looked for jobs, applied for jobs. You know, when you're from employment, you actually, you think you can do, be on your own, do something, start something, but then you're constantly looking at employment <laughs> back. <laughs> yes, so I was very frustrated. Then one day, one of my, uh, someone I knew, called me and said, you know, you've always given me relationship advice. I'm getting married. Okay. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, well, this is good stuff. Mm -hmm. He said, but I don't want to bring any singer to start talking or jazzing funny things. Mm -hmm. I want you to come and say something. You're the one going to speak oh. at my bridal shower. Okay. I was like, wow, okay. I, didn't, I had no clue what I was going to say. But I like to be prepared. So I sat and came up with a template. Mm -hmm. of what I would say. Mm -hmm. So I came up with topics of like effective communication, the power of a praying partner, mm -hmm. how to make your house a home, dealing with in-laws. <gasps> <laughs> yes. well, that's another chapter. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. So when I spoke at her shower, someone recorded a clip of me speaking and they shared it. At my friend's um, bridal shower, she didn't pay me. I came as a friend but spoke. Mm -hmm. Right after that bridal shower, from that bridal shower, I got like two other contacts that had bridal showers but were paying. Wow. So the journey started there, mm -hmm. bridal shower. And then I was thinking, okay, so how do I brand myself? Yes. Because counselor was not flying. Mm -hmm. It was too, I think, English for people. <laughs> they wanted singer. <laughs> I was like, ah, but I don't want to be singer. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I, I, one day I wrote a post about love, one of the bridal showers I had been to to speak, or oh, they paid me, that one they paid me, mm -hmm. there's a hashtag, modern day singer. Modern day singer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tried to put it in a context that people could understand, mm -hmm. yes. And right after that, I got very many other bridal showers that, they kept coming, oh, to okay. this day. Wow. Yes. Okay. So, are you still branded as modern day singer? No. <laughs> no. That was just then. No. Okay. So, uh, I started there. So, of course, there's visibility. Mm. I started to post more on Facebook. I started to write more about relationships, about love, about, yeah, different things. Um, and then I just started studying as well. So I decided I would never show up for anything, for me to speak about anything, if I didn't have a sat in it, if yeah. I didn't have. Mm. So I went ahead, I did a um, certificate for human behavior patterns. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. I was online, but I enjoyed it mm -hmm. because then it gave me, you know, I, I said to understand why people behave the way they do, why what happens to them happens in a certain way and how it affects them, the impact and how they carry it from childhood too. I said to understand myself as well, mm. as a person, why I react but to particular people, particular situations, the way I did. Yeah, I started to correct. Mm -hmm. So I said, hey, if I could only transfer this to other people. Mm. So I started to just um, knock on people's doors. I can do this for you, I can do that. So I started thinking about in-house counseling. In-house meant that you have a counselor attached to your workplace, mm. uh, a, a counselor attached to a school, but people are not, um, yeah. they were not getting the vibe of that. So I think most of them, the answer was, ah, that's not in our budget. Our budget does not cover that. Maybe next financial, yeah. And somehow it never came through. Mm -hmm. But then I didn't stop studying. Mm -hmm. I kept studying, I kept getting advice. Along the way, I met Joan Mugenzi. She advised that, ah, oh, no need to specialize. Just, I also was confused. Did I want to be a coach? Did I want to be a counselor? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. So she, had, she said, you know what? After our sessions, you ascertain what you want to do. Because a coach, the difference is that a coach comes through but they don't give you the answers, no. You find out the answers, they guide you to find these answers. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to see a coach when you have problems, no. Mm. 
yeah, the coach is like for yes, direction. For direction yeah. from the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's just like um, when you're building, um, the interior designer comes in at the end, mm -hmm. coach comes in at the start. Okay, okay, you see? Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I, from, from Joan Mugenzi's sessions, I realized no, I wanted counseling because I wanted to help people who had issues that they were not making sense of. Okay. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And in fact, Joan Mugenzi has also sent me some clients because. They say they want coaching, but then along the way, they realize she realizes, no, you need a counselor, actually. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, long story short, I started doing different certificates to equip myself with certificates in stress, anxiety, and depression. Uh, then, I think for me, the biggest was certificate of reprogramming the mind. Right. Mm -hmm. It changed the way I think. I understood perception and how it affects from what you perceive, how you perceive it, to how it becomes an emotion, to how it becomes um, your words, and how it finally births an action, and then finally a habit. So very many people do not know that. Okay. Is that, is that like similar to, to what you think actually becomes like your reality, what you focus on all the time? I keep telling people exactly that. Mm. The mind believes what you tell it. Mm -hmm. So if you tell the mind that you're not beautiful, mm -hmm. you'll feel exactly like you're not beautiful. So how you perceive yourself mm -hmm. comes, comes to life in how you treat yourself, in the things that you wear, mm -hmm. in how you talk about yourself, in where you place yourself, in the things that you ask for. Instead of asking for two million, you'll ask for 400 yeah, because you're undervaluing yourself. Yes. The mind believes what you tell it.